Hello, everyone. This is Professor He. Nice to see you again. The topic of this task is about the reaction direction and chemical equilibrium. Previously, we analyzed combustion process under the assumption that combustion is complete when there is sufficient time and oxygen. Often, this is not the case. However, a chemical reaction may reach a state of equilibrium before reaching completion, even when there is sufficient time and oxygen. A system is said to be in equilibrium if no changes occur within the system when it is isolated from its surroundings. An isolated system is in mechanical equilibrium if no changes occur in pressure. In thermal equilibrium if no changes occur in temperature. In phase equilibrium, if no transformations occur from one phase to another. And in chemical equilibrium, if no changes occur in the chemical composition of the system. The conditions of mechanical and thermal equilibrium are straightforward, but the conditions of chemical and phase equilibrium can be rather involved. The equilibrium criterion for reacting systems is based on the second law of thermodynamics. More specifically, the increase of entropy principle. For adiabatic systems, chemical equilibrium is established when the entropy of the reacting system reaches a maximum. Most reacting systems encountered in practice are not adiabatic, however. Therefore, we need to develop an equilibrium criterion applicable to any reacting system. Consider a reaction chamber that contains a mixture of carbon monoxide, oxygen, and carbon dioxide at a specified temperature and pressure as shown in the figure. Let's try to predict what will happen in this chamber. Probably the first thing that comes to mind is a chemical reaction between carbon monoxide and oxygen to form more carbon dioxide. This reaction is certainly a possibility, but it's not the only possibility. It's also possible that some carbon dioxide in the combustion chamber will dissociate into carbon monoxide and oxygen. Yet, a third possibility would be to have low reactions among the three components at all. That is, for the system to be in chemical equilibrium. It appears that although we know the temperature, pressure, and composition of the system, we are unable to predict whether the system is in chemical equilibrium. Assume that the carbon monoxide 
oxygen, and carbon monoxide mixture mentioned above is in chemical equilibrium at the specified temperature and pressure. The chemical composition of this mixture does not change unless the temperature or the pressure of the mixture is changed. That is, a reacting mixture in general has different equilibrium compositions and different pressures and temperatures. Therefore, when developing a general criterion for chemical equilibrium, we consider a reacting system at a fixed temperature and pressure. Taking a positive direction of heat transfer to be to the system, the increase of entropy principle for a reacting or non-reacting system was expressed in Project 3 as a system and its surroundings form an adiabatic system and for such system equation 334 reduces to ds system is larger than zero that is a chemical reaction in an adiabatic chamber proceeds in the direction of increasing entropy when the entropy reaches a maximum the reaction stops therefore entropy is a very useful property in the analysis of reacting adiabatic systems when a reacting system involves heat transfer the increase of entropy principle relation becomes impractical to use. However, since it requires a knowledge of heat transfer between the system and its surroundings, a more practical approach would be to develop a relation for the equilibrium criteria in terms of the properties of the reacting system only. Consider a reacting simple compressible system of fixed mass with only quasi equilibrium work modes and a specified temperature T and pressure P. Combining the first and the second law relations for this system gives the differential of the GIFS function at constant temperature and pressure is we then have therefore a chemical reaction at a specified temperature and pressure proceeds in the direction of a decreasing GIFS function the reaction stops and chemical equilibrium is established when the Gibbs function attains a minimum value. Therefore, the criterion for chemical equilibrium can be expressed as a chemical reaction at a specified temperature and pressure cannot proceed in the direction of the increasing Gibbs function since this will be a violation of the second law of thermodynamics. Notice that if the temperature or the pressure is changed, the reacting system will assume a different equilibrium state, which is the state of the minimum GIFS function at the new temperature or pressure. For a stoichiometric reaction, 
where the gammas are the stoichiometric coefficients, which are evaluated easily once the reaction is specified. The general stoichiometric reaction with positive stoichiometric coefficients of products and negative stoichiometric coefficients of reactants can be expressed as to obtain a relation for chemical equilibrium in terms of the properties of the individual components. Consider a mixture of four chemical components A, B, C, and D that exist in equilibrium at a specified temperature and pressure. Let the number of moles of the respective components be N, A, N, B, N, C, and N, D. Now consider a reaction that occurs to an infinitesimal extent during which differential amounts of A and B are converted to C and D while the temperature and the pressure remains constant. The equilibrium criterion equation A requires that the change in the Gibbs function of the mixture during this process be equal to zero. That is, this relation can also be obtained directly from equation 1355. Comparing reactions B and C yields, where epsilon is a proportionality constant and represents the extent of a reaction. Then the equilibrium criteria reduces as this equation involves the stoichiometric coefficients and the more Gibbs function of the reactants and the products and is known as the criteria for chemical equilibrium. It's valid for any chemical reaction regardless of the phases involved. The criteria for chemical equilibrium implies when the values of the summation is zero, the reacting system reaches the chemical equilibrium. When the value of the summation is negative, the reaction proceeds right and the products increase. When the value of the summation is positive, the reaction proceeds left and the reactants increase. Okay, that's all for this task. Thank you very much and see you next time. Thank you.